Well, hello. Um, this is by parts day two. Um, what assignment is that? I think it's assignment 20. Um, I can check that pretty quick. Let's just confirm that we're talking about assignment 20 right now. Yes, integration by parts day two is assignment 20. So let's take a look at this. Uh, really, it's it's not going to be new, new stuff. Um, it's just going to be uh, more practice with the stuff that we're supposed to be comfortable with. All right. So let's take a look. Um, here's number one. In fact, why don't you do this one? Um, this is the integral of x squared sine 2x dx. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so did you do it? Are you back? Are you ready? Do you feel good about it? I'm gonna do tabular because otherwise I'd have to do by parts twice. Um, so I've got x squared, I've got 2x, I've got 2, I've got 0. I take derivatives here, and here, sine 2x, I do antiderivatives. So what's the antiderivative of this? It's negative cosine 2x over 2. Yes, over 2, because if I take the derivative of negative cosine 2x, I'm going to have the derivative of negative cosine, which is positive sine, times the derivative of the sine function, which is 2. But I don't have a 2 here, so there must be something present in the original function, so that when I take the derivative of this original function, that 2 that comes from chain rule gets canceled out because I don't have a 2 over here. Okay, and every time I go back, I'm going to have to have another 2 coming out. So I'm going to multiply the denominator by another 2 every time I go backwards. It's not adding a 2, it's multiplying by a 2. So when I go backwards again, um, the derivative, I'm sorry, the antiderivative of negative cosine will be negative sine 2x over 4. And then the antiderivative of negative sine will be cosine 2x over 8. Okay, we're going on the diagonal. Um, and remember, we're going to multiply this product by a plus. We're going to multiply this product by a minus. We're going to multiply this product by a plus. So we're going to end up with negative x squared over 2 cosine 2x, yeah, because we've got positive times a negative. There's that over 2 and the 2x. Good. Now we've got a negative times a negative, so plus this 2 cancels a 2 here, and so we have x over 2 sine 2x. Um, and that was that negative times that negative for that positive. Great. And then here, we have positive times positive is positive, twos cancel, and we've got um, cosine 2x over 4 plus c. Yes, I know this is 8, but 2 and 8, I can take a 2 out of each of those, and that's where that 4 is coming from. Okay, so there's my integral. Um, you're welcome to do this with uh, by parts twice. Um, yeah, okay, how about this one? x to the third, ln of x dx. Please find that antiderivative. Pause the video. Give it a try. Really, you should keep taking advantage of this practice. Okay, welcome back. Um, so, by parts, not tabular. Why not tabular? Because I don't know the antiderivative of that. <laughs> In fact, I know the derivative of that, so I'm putting that there which means I'm putting x to the third over here. Derivative this way. Antiderivative this way. x to the fourth over four. So what's this going to be equal to? This is going to be equal to x to the fourth over four ln of x minus the integral of x to the fourth over four times one over x dx. Okay, well, that's a constant, and I'm just going to pull it out. And then I can cancel an x with an x. And so now I have x to the fourth over 4, ln of x, minus 1 fourth. What's the antiderivative of x to the third? 
means x to the fourth over four, and don't forget the plus c. Yeah, I probably would turn that into 16, um, because it's likely that something like this would show up on a multiple choice test, and these fours wouldn't be there. We would have a 16, okay? So again, I'm putting the polynomial up here unless I have a situation where, yeah, I don't really know the antiderivative of that. Um, though, you know, we could um, do by parts where we say, all right, uh, ln of x, um, this is going to be 1 over x dx, and this is 1 dx, and this is x. So by using by parts, I can actually answer the question, what's the antiderivative of ln of x? And I end up with x ln of x minus the integral of x times 1 over x dx. Those are going to cancel, cancel the antiderivative of 1 is x. Okay, and so do you really want to put ln of x in this corner so that this has to be the antiderivative? Yeah, no, not me. Definitely not me. So, um, but with that in mind, I think you should be able to do this problem. Please find the antiderivative of inverse sine. Mm -hmm. It is a bipartisan problem. It's just like the ln I just showed you. All right, how'd it go? Did you do it? I hope you did it. So, by parts, I know the derivative of inverse sine of x. That's 1 over square root 1 minus x squared. But over here, what am I putting? Well, what's left? I'm putting 1 dx over here. And so the antiderivative will be x. So, by, by parts, recipe says this times this x sine inverse x. Um, yeah, and no, this isn't sine to the negative one, so I should move it to the denominator. This is inverse sine. All right, be clear about that. Minus the integral of this times this. And so we have x over square root 1 minus x squared dx. Hey, so how are we going to do this integral? Huh? How are you going to do that one? The answer to that is, of course, a u sub, because I see a function inside a function in the denominator, and I see, you know, a chunk of its derivative right here. So if I make u1 minus x squared, then the u is negative 2x dx, and I've got an x dx. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And so I can replace x dx, that's this stuff, with du over negative 2, and I can replace all the stuff under the radical with u. So now what am I going to have? x sine inverse x minus integral 1 over square root of u du over negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to pull out this negative 2. Negative times negative is positive, so I'll have a plus 1 half. And this 1 over square root, yeah, no, not my cup of tea. That's going to be u to the negative 1 half. All right. So what's the antiderivative here? Oh, wait a second. That's it right there. Well, because I'd have to add a 1 here, right? This would become a 1 half. So a 1 half must have been here and then came down. There it is. So my antiderivative then is just going to be plus u to the 1 half plus c. And again, I can't have u's and x's. i got to get rid of this and replace it with what u is equal to. And so my final answer then, x sine inverse of x plus square root 1 minus x squared plus c. Yes, of course, you could leave it raised to the 1 half power. That's not an issue. Uh, though in chapter 5, we did see um, that we'd actually prefer to have the rational exponents in case there was some factoring we needed to do. There's no factoring here, but I do want to point out two things. This is a biparts problem to start it. To start, I had to do biparts. 
And that brought me to here and another integral. And I looked at this and I said, that's not by parts, that's a u sub, because I see a function and part of the derivative of that function. Don't be surprised by that kind of thing where, oh, I thought it was just a by parts problem. And then it turned into something else. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can do it. All right, what's next? How about this one? How about the integral of e to the 2x cosine x dx? Will you please find the antiderivative there? Hey, welcome back. Um, ideally, you recognized that this is that special case where both of these, doesn't matter which you pick for the derivative and which you pick for the antiderivative, both of these are going to spin forever. And you remember what we said in the last video about that situation? Mm -hmm. That's right, we're going to go around twice. And when we're done going around twice, there better be a negative in front of that integral. And what's on the right side of that integral had better be this. So let's go about doing that. Um, yeah, cosine x, negative sine x dx. This is going to be e to the 2x dx. And remember, when we go backwards, we're going to have e to the 2x over 2. Think about it. If you take the derivative of 1 half e to the 2x, you're going to have that constant times e to the stuff times the derivative of stuff. And that's what I have. But if I don't put that there, then I don't end up with the correct antiderivative. So I do need that over 2. Over 2. Okay, so let's do our recipe. <coughs> this integral is going to equal e to the 2x over 2 cosine x minus the integral e to the 2x over 2 times negative sine x dx. And I agree, taking that negative out and having it play with that negative makes a lot of sense to me. Plus times sine x dx. In fact, I think I want to take out that constant as well. Okay, so, hey, look at that. I'm ready to do another by parts. I put triggy in top left, so I'm still putting triggy in top left. And e to the 2x, and this will be e to the 2x over 2. Remember, all of this is behind this plus 1 half. So my integral is now going to be integral of e to the 2x cosine x dx equals e to the 2x over 2 cosine x plus 1 half times, this times this, e to the 2x over 2 sine x um, minus the integral of this times this. So minus the integral e to the 2x the 2x over 2 times cosine x dx. Now, see that over 2? I'm pulling that out and making it be that 1 half. In fact, let's just move this so that they can be next to each other. Okay, so we had said minus um, e to the 2x over 2 and cosine x dx. All right, this was the two I talked about pulling out. So I'm gonna have minus one half here. Mm -hmm. This one half has to be distributed to this and to this. This positive gets distributed as well. But here we are, see, this is, we've gone around twice and we're back where we started. And when I distribute, I'm still gonna have that minus there. So now I'm looking at e to the 2x cosine x dx equals e to the 2x over 2 cosine x plus 1 half times 1 half is 
e to the 2x over 4 sine x, and this one half times this one half, minus 1 fourth e to the 2x cosine x dx. Has to be a minus there. This has to be my original. Okay? So, what do I want? Well, this is the same as that. So I need to add this. I need to add this stuff to both sides. So I'm adding one fourth of that integral to one of those integrals. Four fourths plus one fourth gives me five fourths times the integral e to the two x cosine x dx. And on the other side of the equal sign, this has all been moved over here, and I just have this stuff. e to the 2x over 2 cosine x plus e to the 2x over 4 sine x. Well, that's great. Um, that's nice, but I don't want 5 fourths of this integral. I just want that integral. So I still need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal for this. And so twos will cancel here. And so my final answer da, 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 is going to be that this integral is equal to um, 2 fifths e to the 2x um, cosine x plus e to the 2x over 4. Oh, I needed to distribute that 4 fifths to both of these 4 fifths. Okay, so that's going to be 1 fifth. Uh, sine x. And don't forget the plus c. Hubba hubba. No, really, you might want to try that one again. Um, yeah. Doable. Uh, just got to pay attention. Don't want to make little mistakes on that one. So, um, what do we hit the first? I, uh, I, ooh. So, yeah, here's this place we're headed next. It, you know, every year, College Board tweaks the AP exam a little bit. Um, in some cases, a lot of it. Uh, but they've been sort of jiggling around topics recently. And it turns out that they've added some new stuff. Um, you know, at most, you're going to see one of each of these types on your AP exam. And that's at most, okay? And we will come back and review this during our AP review in the spring. But for right now, I think it makes for interesting addition of topic. So the worksheet that I'm looking at that you'll get in the spring is called Integrals requiring long division and, no kidding, completing the square. Yeah, there was a reason you learned completing the square, um, and it wasn't just for the equation of a circle. So these are the two types that I'd like to look at now. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, how about this one? The integral from 1 to e of x squared plus 1 over x dx. Now, let's talk about this. Uh, I know it's on this worksheet called Integrals Requiring Long Division and Completing the Square. Um, but, you know, when you get to a test, the test isn't going to sort of give you a hint like that. It's just going to be a problem there on the page. So... Is it a u sub? Well, I see a function, and I see part of its derivative. So what happens if I pursue that logic? u equals 2x plus 1, du equals 2 dx. Oh, sorry. u equals x squared plus 1, and so du is 2x dx. Well, notice what's got here. These are on the same line. These are not on the same line. That's why that's not a u sub. We talked about this before, 
and said whenever the degree on top is the same as the degree on the bottom or bigger on top. It's not slant asymptote rules, right? When the degrees are the same, I use the ratio of leading coefficients. This isn't that. It's when the degree on the top is bigger or even when, when the degree on the top is the same. That's when we want to be using long division. Okay, so this is long division. Because the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator. Okay. Don't forget the zero placeholder. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by x, get x squared, subtract, and I get a remainder of 1. So this can be rewritten as x plus remainder over divisor. And that makes sense. Look, if you split this up into two fractions, you'd have that 1 over x, and you'd have x squared over x, which is x. But trust me, when you um, are faced with this, it's likely that you're going to have to do that, um, do that division. Okay, so the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. The antiderivative of 1 over x is ln of x. And oh, by the way, this is a definite integral. So I'm going to plug in my e. Now e squared over 2 plus ln of e is 1 minus, I'm going to plug in a 1, 1 half, and ln of 1 is 0. But I want you to notice that this minus out here has to go to both of those. And a lot of people forget putting this to this. Luckily here, we're protected from our, our uh, forgetfulness. But in other problems, we won't be. And so really, when you do FTC2, think of this stuff minus all this stuff. Okay, so what do we end up with? We have e squared over 2 plus 1 half. 1 minus a half is 1 half. And in fact, we might even see this represented as e squared plus 1 all over 2. Um, on my worksheet, this is in fact a multiple choice question, and that's choice B. Okay, so uh, dividing. Okay, now it's your turn. How about this one? An integral of x squared minus x minus 5 over x plus 2. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, let's have this be a bounded integral. Okay, give it a go. Hey, welcome back. How'd it go? Um, I hope you thought, oh look, the degree here is greater than or equal to this degree, so I had better do some long division. And I'm going to have to multiply by x squared plus 2x and subtract minus 3x minus 5. That means a minus 3. 6, and when I subtract, remember minus a minus is a plus. So plus 6 minus 5 is 1. So 1 over divisor. All right, now that's not my answer. That's I've rewritten this algebraic expression to be this. This and this are the same thing. This, I don't want to try and integrate. This, I like to think is a pretty straightforward antiderivative. I mean, really, look, this is going to be x squared over 2. That's going to be minus 3x. Here's a gentle u sub plus ln x plus 2. And we want to evaluate this from 1 to 2. So 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Uh, minus 6. And 2 plus 2 is 4. So plus ln of 4. Minus, now let's plug the 1 in. 1 half. 3, and 1 plus 2 is 3 plus ln of 3. So what happens? Well, that's going to be negative 4. Negative 4 plus ln of 4 
minus, this is going to be negative 5 halves, minus a minus 5 halves is plus 5 halves, and then minus times positive is minus a minus of 3. 8 halves minus 8 halves plus 5 halves is going to get me minus 3 halves plus ln of 4 minus ln of 3. And there's my answer. Um, ln of 4. You know what? This is multiple choice, by the way. And they did it. They did it. They condensed these into one. Um, two logs joined with subtraction can be rewritten as one log joined with division. And so that's my answer, and that one corresponds to A. Okay, so I do long division because I can't integrate that. But when I do long division, this divided by this, my quotient, what's left, is something now really easy to integrate. All right, be careful of your sign mistakes when you're evaluating intervals. All right, so how about this one now? Um, let's take a look at this. The integral of 1 over x squared um, minus 2x plus 2 dx. So, you know, here's the thing. I had mentioned briefly before partial fraction decomposition. Yeah, this isn't that because you can't factor that. Partial fraction decomposition requires me to be able to factor that. And since I can't factor that, I'm not going to be doing a partial fraction decomposition. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to do completing the square here. No, really. So let's do this. x squared minus 2x plus 2. This is the thing I want to do completing the square with. Okay. And, uh, and just, you know, let's call it y for a moment. I remember that for completing the square, I need to have the x stuff alone. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. x squared minus 2x equals y minus 2. Fabulous. Now, in order to complete this square, I need to add the magic amount to both sides of the equation. What was that magic amount? It was b over 2 squared. Well, here's my b, negative 2. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. I'm going to have negative 1 squared. And negative 1 squared is just a matter of adding 1 to both sides here. So on the left-hand side, I end up with that. No, really, I do. This unsquared thing is always that. And over here, we have y minus 1. Okay? Then I want to go back and add 1. So I've got x minus 1 squared plus 1 equals y. Great. So all this stuff down here was equal to y. And now that y is equal to this thing. And so I can replace all that stuff down there with this. I know when you're saying like, okay, sure I can, but why? Well, look at it now. x minus 1 squared plus 1 dx. And what I'd love you to be able to see here is, this is arctan. 1 over thing squared plus 1. That's arctan. You might want to do a u substitution, where you say that u equals x minus 1, and so du equals dx. And so now, you can describe this as the integral from uh, of 1, u squared plus 1, du, right? Because my dx was du, and my u was all the stuff inside here in the squaring, also in the denominator. That's perfect inverse tangent. Tangent inverse of u plus c, and now let's put our u back in. Tangent inverse of x minus 1 plus c. So, you know, this completing the square thing, wow, that was really helpful. I went from, oh God, please not uh, partial fraction decomposition to, oh, no, it's not. I can't factor it. So it can't be partial fraction decomposition. 
is not a u sub because I don't see an x minus 2 up here um, or an x minus 1 up here, you know, some part of that derivative. So that's not going to work. I don't recognize it as anyone's derivative. Um, by parts, I see a function, but I really don't want to try that by parts. That just looks like a nightmare. Uh, and it turns out, if we do completing the square, it turns out pretty okay. So let's see about doing another one uh, like that and see how it goes. Um, how about you do this one? Integral of 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now, if that were a minus 5, I'd be doing partial fraction decomposition um, because a minus 5 would factor. But a plus 5? No, 1 and 5, or negative 1 and negative 5, not going to be making positive 4. So, give it a go. Come back when you're done. Hey, welcome back. So, um, again, x squared plus 4x plus 5 equals my y. And we'll say all of this stuff is y. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides because I want to isolate the x still. I need, now need to add that magic amount, b over 2 squared gets added to both sides. Here's my b. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so I'm adding 2 squared, or 4, to both sides. On the left-hand side, this now factors as x plus 2 uh, squared. And over here, we have y minus 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides, which means that x plus 2 squared plus 1 is y. And y was all the stuff on the bottom. So all the stuff on the bottom can be replaced with this. So now I'm looking at the integral of 1 over x plus 2 squared plus 1 dx. And again, I see inverse tan. Look, thing squared plus 1 in the denominator. So tangent inverse, x plus 2, um, plus c. There's my antiderivative. Um, feel free to use a u sub where you say u is x plus 2, and therefore that du is dx, uh, and you'll be able to get to the same place pretty quick. Okay? All right. Well, so that's, um, that's using completing the square. It's really not that big a deal. Um, it, it feels like we've done so many more things that are so much more a bigger deal than doing a, a little old completing the square. Um, but yeah, like, again, this calculus, it feels like I'm using stuff from all the previous math classes. It really is the culmination. It really does bring everything together. In fact, it might even suggest that that secondary math high school experience that you had, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Pre-Cal, was all getting you ready to be really successful in calculus. Putting all that knowledge to work here. And that's really what this is about. Okay, last one. Um, integral 6x squared minus 4x minus 25 over x minus 2 dx. There you go. Uh, take care of that, and we'll be happy campers. Hey, welcome back. Um, so, did you do the long division? Um, because the degree at the top is the same or larger than the degree on the bottom, I know that's what I have to do. What do I multiply this by to turn it into that? 6x, 6x squared minus 12x. Don't forget you're subtracting and that minus a minus is a plus. A lot of people make a mistake right there. Minus 4 plus 12 should be positive 8x. And don't forget to bring down minus 25. What do I multiply that by to turn it to that? That's going to be an 8. That's 8x minus 16. And yes, we are subtracting. And so I'm going to have minus 9 because this is minus 25 plus 16, and that minus 9 goes above my divisor. Okay, so that's the long division part. And why did we do that? 
because instead of integrating this thing, which we can't, we're going to integrate this thing, which we can. The antiderivative of 6x is going to be 3x squared. The antiderivative of 8 is going to be 8x. And then what about over here? Well, you know, you could write this as minus 9, 1 over x minus 2 dx, and then you could do u equals x minus 2 and du equals dx, um, and then you'll end up with 9 minus 9 ln x minus 2 plus c. It's all coming together. Even first semester calculus is playing a role in helping me to understand this. Okay, well, that's it for today's video. I hope that was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Take care, everyone.